At some point, it feels like every developer ends up writing some kind of emailing system. It could be something as simple as a single email for somebody who fills out a form or a more complex flow for a SaaS product. But whatever the use case, if you've ever tried to write an email from scratch in 2023, you know it's a pain in the butt. It's just not an enjoyable experience. Well, what if you could write emails with React and TypeScript? And that's what I'm going to show you today, this React email, which is in beta currently. But I've been playing around with it, and I wanted to just kind of give you a first look at React email. Now, before we do that, let me just show you some examples they've got over here so you can kind of see what you could build. And it's really easy. And again, you even get type checking when you're filling these things out. So here I'll click on this Slack one. You can see that they just built this out using React components. And then you can essentially render it to plain static HTML. They do all the hard work of putting it in tables and all kind of the annoying stuff you have to do to make sure it's uh, visible in all these different email programs. Super easy to work with, though, from a developer standpoint. You can see here's one for Twitch or for Vercel, a Notion link, a Dropbox reset password. They're just showing you samples, and these are a lot of these are user submitted as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm just going to, again, do a brief overlook at kind of what I've been playing around with with React email. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, so let's go ahead and give this thing a first look. And to do so, I'm going to jump straight into the docs and, again, just kind of walk you through the basic setup and kind of how you would use it. So go to the automatic setup, and I'm just going to use MPX. That works for me. So I'm going to create it right here in this directory. Because this might take just a second, let me fast forward and be right back with you. All right, so as you can see here, it's going to create a new folder called React Email Starter. So let me go ahead and CD into that React Email Starter. And then I'll just npm install it. And once again, let me give this a couple seconds. All right, looks like it's finished installing. Let me go ahead and open this up with VS Code on the left and here are the docs on the right, and I'll be right back with you. All right, here we are. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just run this locally so you can see everything happening here live. Uh, so let's do that. And the way this works, it actually uses Next.js, so it's going to install all the dependencies there, and that's for the dev side of stuff, so just to give you kind of that preview. So let's let that install, and then finally I'll be back with you. All right, so after a little bit of waiting here and there, it looks like we've now got this set and ready to go. And so let me open this up on port 3000, and you can see here we are right here. Not only does it give you access to the docs, but it's going to give you several sample emails. Now, all those are built right here. So you can see 1234, that's what shows up over here. And again, the, the next app that they're using is actually right here. Uh, we'll leave that stuff alone and just play around with the stuff in the emails folder. So if I click over here, let's look at maybe this for cell one right here. This is one of those sample ones. I think I may have even showed you the Stripe one. Um, so let's just go ahead and click through some of these. So real easy to build these out. And if you're not sure exactly what this looks like, you can either toggle the source up here and actually see the React and see the rendered HTML. Or if you'd like to, you can come over here and click and actually open up the file itself and just adjust it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to close down a lot of these things. And maybe let's come back to this for cell one since that's what I opened up over this way. All right, so as we make changes over here, this should live update for us. You can see that what we've got, though, is just a bunch of components that are pre-built for React email. It's also pulling in React itself, and you can see all this is just being rendered HTML, then the head component preview, which is like that little preview of the email that may show in some email providers. You've got sections, containers, and it's going to worry about building all this out using like the table syntax from HTML of yesteryear. It'll do all that for you to make sure it's compatible with all the basic major uh, email providers. So you can see it's real easy to get started with. All the styling is done in a CSS in JS style syntax. So we've got objects down here below that actually spell out what a container should look like, what the main should look like. So we can easily change any of these things. If I came in here, we said something like B, F, sure that'll work. And then over this way, this should update for us live. And you can see that now this background color for the entire main component is that pink color. Now, in addition to just changing some basic things about the CSS like what we've done there, you might also say, okay, well, what about the components? What components are available to me? And of course, you can just pick through the examples and look at them that way. But if you'd like to, let me come over here. I can open this up and actually look at all the different components I have access to. So HTML, head, button, container, column, section, HR, image, link, and preview, and text. So all of these are things that you can use. And if you want to know how they do that, you can see it right over this way. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of customization on our own. I'm going to come over here and let's just get rid of lots of different things. So uh, let's see. Maybe let's just change back out. Did I already change that? I did. Okay. So let me just refresh. This will give us our white background. And then I might come in top here and let's shift around this button. So instead of saying join the team, I'll say like uh, contact me. 
And then we can change this to whatever we want. So we can say like mail to uh, Chris at coding, coding in public dot dev. Refresh over here. And if I hover over this, you can see that this mail to link down below here is saying to email me. Now you can see in this example, they've actually used a table structure itself, but I can just get rid of all this. But I could, for instance, pull in a section. And for my style here, again, I could reference the CSS down below, or I could just write the object directly in here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll say display. And then here, I'm going to go for grid. And then we'll do place items center. And then I might want to combine it this with an existing style down below. So let me find something here. Maybe I combine it with this container. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, to combine the two, let's see where are we at. Right up here, I can also just pull in the container styles. Now in the very middle of here, I may actually want to add like my own avatar. So let's refresh this. Now this should be hot reloading, but it may be just that it's in beta here that it's not working for me today. But let me come over here and let's go to, let's go to coding in public dot dev. Here I'm going to steal this right here. Let's steal that and I'm going to drop it right inside here. Let's add it as an image. And we have, uh, let's see. Yeah, we've already pulled it in up this way. So we can quickly just reference everything we need right on here. Now let me jump over here and just walk through what this would include. So you can actually install these directly if you'd like to, or just individually as you need each component. Because we did the automatic installation, it grabbed everything we could use and dropped it all inside our project. But you could install them one at a time if you'd like to. In this case, you can see that we've got a bunch of different props that we can pass down, like the alt, the source, the width, and the height. So those are all things that we can pass in down here. And if I jump back over this way, let's go ahead and add those in. And because this is built with TypeScript, you can see I'm actually getting type checking as I start to type. So the source is going to be that coding in public. Let's see, width, here we go. Let's do something like, I don't know, uh, 80. And for my alt, I could say like Chris Pennington. So if I save all that and come over this way, there we go. You can see it pulled all of that in there. And again, I'm just using normal React. Now, how do you actually get this out of React and into something you can use? Well, if I come back over to the docs, open this up on the sidebar, you can see that we've got a couple different options. Number one, we can just render it. So you can see what this is going to do is just render it to an HTML string. So maybe just to keep stuff simple, let's pull this in and just do it in the exact same component here. And so this would need to be email because that's what the component is called. And we can actually pass in props as well. So maybe we'll pass in a prop of first name. So let's do that. And then as I come down this way, let's reference that somewhere. How about right here? And then in this case, I'm in the same file, so I don't need to import the component, but I do need to import render. And then just so we can actually see it, let's come down this way. Let me just go ahead and console log this down below, and this should show up down here once I refresh over this way. So there you go. That's what it's actually going to render in HTML. And you can see how it's done all the hard work of adding like individual padding to each individual line, how it adds the font size, the style, all that to each individual paragraph, which is what you have to do if you're writing this from scratch. It's a pain in the neck. So again, that's why this is so helpful. There's our image we added, and you can see it actually added it in a table with a table body, table row, table data, all that I didn't have to do. I just dropped it in a little section tag and it did all that work for me. So super, super helpful. And I'm really interested in, in what um, this company is up to. Um, it's put together by a couple different people. Let's see if I can remember who it is. I know one of them is Zeno and I've really enjoyed following him. He's got an amazing blog and just a, a really skilled developer. I don't know who Boo is, but um, I'm assuming that's how you say his name or her name, but uh, really have enjoyed this. And they've actually just started a company all around email and uh, I'm really interested in following them. So that's one way that you can actually render it if you're just rendering it to static HTML and then using whatever platform you are wanting to do. But there's also integrations, which is probably how most people will use it. And that does the same thing, but it passes it along to something like Node Mailer. So you can see in this case, Node Mailer, what were the other ones we had options for? Uh, SendGrid, Postmark, AWS, all that is available. Let's come back here to Node Mailer. And if I were to do this, I won't do this live for you because it's basically the same thing, but you can see how you would first need to install Node Mailer. Obviously, uh, this already comes installed with the automatic, which is what we just did a moment ago. Then you've got whatever your function is. In this case, that's what we have right over here in this file. And then all you would do is when you create your transporter, in this case, that's how Node Mailer works. You create this transport. And then when you actually pass in an option, the HTML property, normally you just write some static HTML there, you're actually going to grab this from the render function that again accepts your React component. Now, one more thing to know, if you come over this way, you can actually send yourself a preview of this. So you just type in your own email. So I'll say chris at codinginpublic.dev and you can send it. 
and you can see you can change the subject line if you'd like to. And let me go ahead and pull that up and I'll be right back with you. All right, so here's the email it sent me. It's really nice that you can actually test this out in your own client and actually play with it. So again, huge props to the team. They've clearly thought through a lot of the use cases and it's just a delight to write in, which is not something I've ever said about writing custom emails. Now, as we close, just a couple things to mention here. One is that it is not yet responsive. The emails themselves are not responsive yet. I think they are working on that, but they're actively developing this. And I think they're coming up with their own system for actually handling the entire email experience from custom writing it, like I've shown you today, all the way through actually providing some kind of email system. And that is yet to come, but super interesting to pay attention to. Now, if you want to follow along with that, I would go to resend.com and you can see what they're doing. Again, this is the actual company that they've created to actually work with email from start to finish. And it's currently in private beta. I don't yet have access to this, but if I get access, I'll show you in plus props for this. I mean, come on, right? You can actually spin this and interact with it. So just, I love the design. I love the dev experience. And in the end, the product looks super professional and is super easy to get up and started with. Well, I hope this is a helpful first look. That's really all it is at this point. But as it develops and as I play around with it, I'm sure to do more videos on it in the future. All right, thanks so much. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.